What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me today. I am sitting whipside in my BMW M850 Grand Coupe and today I'm gonna to be doing some coding using the Bimmer Code app. I know a lot of you guys are very familiar with this if you've been in the Bimmer world for a while. This is actually my first go around with it. So I have to say I'm very pleased with some of the coding options that I've been able to utilize. And I wanna start by saying, when you download the app, it's gonna give you a list of compatible vehicles. It's pretty much everything after the early 2000s. And then you can also choose an OBD dongle that you're going to use for this experience. I chose the one that was recommended by Bimmer Code, mainly because I bought a cheaper one first and it didn't have all of the options for me. I wanted all the options in case I wanted to do some crazy coding. So I bought the OBD Link CX from Amazon. I will drop the link in the description. It's about $70 for this OBD dongle. And I'll go ahead and give you a look-see right here. There you have that, nice and simple. And then it's also worth noting that the Bimmer Code app itself, in order for you to do any coding, is gonna require a premium version of the app, which is 50 bucks. So yeah, 120, 125 bucks out the door, you get everything, but in my opinion, it's worth every single penny. And today I'm gonna give you guys the top five things that I've messed around with. There is an expert mode. I didn't dabble in the expert mode. I just wanted to turn off some annoying things that are factory settings that you just can't turn off. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up the Bimmer Code app. So first things first, before we get into the app, we're gonna have to install the dongle here. Right underneath of the driver's side door, go ahead. Push that up in there and you're gonna see it light up and then you know it's ready to go. And now we can open up the app. So now we have the Bimmer Code app opened on our phone, dongles plugged in. I'm sitting in the car without the engine running, the door is open and we're basically parked. So we're just gonna tap connect. And then you're gonna choose the OBD Link CX here at the very top. It's already checked because I've already used it. We're just gonna tap connect here on the bottom right. And that is going to connect to the adapter itself. And then once it establishes that a connection, we're gonna go ahead and choose BMW 8 Series M8 at the very top. Tap continue. And you can hear the car going into its diagnostic mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what options there are. Now it is going to take a minute or so to identify all your ECUs and get connected to the vehicle itself. So I'm gonna pause this for a moment till we actually get into the app. Okay, here we are. We are in the connected Bimmer Code app to my specific vehicle. Uh, this is everything you can expect to see in an 8 Series. So you have all of these options here. Some of the lists can be more robust depending on the vehicle, maybe some more options, but this is everything that you're going to get with the specific dongle using the Bimmer Code app. So the first thing I wanna focus on is going to be your automatic start stop engine feature, which drives me absolutely insane. So let's go ahead and tap on that. That's gonna be engine control unit right here. And you can see it's reading the coding data. Now I've already done this, so I'm not gonna recode my vehicle, but this is exactly what you're going to tap and do when you get into the app. So the very first option right there, auto start stop function memory. That just means that it's going to remember the last setting that you had it on. I'm not gonna mess with that. And then right here below, auto start stop function not active. That's what you want. Let's tap on it. So by factory default, it's going to be active like so. So when you want to make a change, you're gonna tap the save button and then bottom right, you're gonna tap that code and that's gonna go ahead and give you another warning that says, are you sure you wanna do this? You can always revert back. So you're gonna tap yes and it's gonna take about 30 seconds to do it. Now seeing as I've already done it, I'm going to back out of this and I'm going to discard the changes. So basically I'm gonna go back into the auto start stop function, make sure that my settings are still there and then I'm gonna show you what it does on the dash when you use this feature. So here we go. We wanna leave it on auto start stop function, not active exactly the way it is. So with that being said, let me stop this. I'm gonna go show you some dash video of how it works 
with the auto start stop function enabled. All right, so here we are on a test drive after disabling the auto start stop. I'm going to come to a complete stop so you can see what it does. And then you can see that change right there where it lines out the automatic start stop. So this does work by simply disabling the automatic start stop. However, it doesn't always work. Sometime during that drive or during that trip or while you're driving around that day, it will stop working. You might have several drives where it does it perfectly fine. And then once you park it, get back in it, it could work again. It could not auto stop the engine. It could go any sort of different direction, but it doesn't always work. It's not the most reliable. I have found a way to work around that and that's what we're gonna focus on next. So in order to fully eliminate that auto start stop feature, we're gonna go ahead and tap on sport mode and we're gonna go into the individual settings here. So let me let that focus a little bit. We're gonna choose configure individual. And as you can see, I have every option in here set to comfort. And you wanna have it set at comfort because it'll essentially allow your car to start up, automatically be in sport individual and have all of the comfort driving settings so that you're not essentially wasting more gas and sporting around town if you're not really trying to do that, you're just trying to casually go about your day and that handles that. So I've already showed you how to use this workaround in Sport Individual. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the Body Domain Controller, which is your Windows Doors, Driving Mode, Lighting, the third option down here. We're going to tap on that and we're going to go ahead and let that connect. Let's give it a minute. I'm going to pause this video. All right, here we are, guys. We're in the Body Domain Controller and this is going to be step two of the Auto Start Stop feature. However, I'm including it as number two on my list of things to do because it is also another setting and I highly recommend doing this if you do permanently want to disable that auto start stop. So what we're gonna do is we are going to scroll down to driving mode and we're gonna tap on default driving mode and you can see I already have it set at sport individual. So you can choose all sorts of different startup modes in the car which means every time you start the car, by default, it will be in this selected driving mode. Factory mode is going to be comfort. I've changed it to sport individual based on the settings that I already used when I showed you the video prior to opening the app. Now, the reason we're gonna do this, and I know what you're thinking, is why would I make sport mode be the default startup on the car when you usually have to push the button anyway after the car starts to change it to sports individual or whatever mode you wanna change it to, and this is why. So every time you start the car, it will be in sport individual with the settings that you already set it to, which basically mimics comfort mode. So no matter what, it'll say sport individual when you turn on the car, and then you're basically driving in comfort mode. So it's a win-win and you still have both of your sport modes usable, which is standard sport mode and then also sport plus. So don't worry there, sport individual is just gonna be another version of comfort which comes on automatically with the car. You can see I have it selected right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that. Entering the vehicle after making the sport individual adjustments that we made, and you can see right here, the auto start stop button is already lit up, indicating that it is turned off. And that's before I even start the car. So let's go ahead and get in here and start her up. So, as you can see, the automatic drive mode setting that we coded in the app is now setting it up and we are riding in sport individual. You can see that up there. One little added Easter egg here. I did change my gauges so that the speedometer goes up to 200. It's still the stock version, but it just goes up to 200. I think originally it was 160. So there are tons of things you can mess around with. But anyway, back to having the non-auto start stop running and uh, we're good to go sport individual basically driving in comfort and that handles that so you don't have to push anything when you get in the car so back in the body domain controller 
we are going to scroll down right here to doors and windows horn signal when locking the car with engine running i don't know if any of you are experiencing this it's very annoying like if you want to run in the store real quick and you lock the door and you leave it running and you take your fob with you the horn beeps two or three times loudly it's really obnoxious my five series didn't do that so now i've selected not active so by default it comes active we're going to go ahead and select not active and that is going to disable the horn honking when you go to lock the doors while the car is running i highly recommend this feature because i live in florida it's hot here and sometimes when i'm running in and out of a store i don't want to shut the car off and i want to lock the doors so that takes care of that and i'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of this while it's running all right guys here we are in the garage car is clearly running right now we're going to go ahead and lock the door and show you that that annoying horn has stopped here we go i don't know if you could hear that but the door has locked no horn honks thank god that is finally gone we can move on with our lives all right guys back in the bimmer code app this is option number four that i don't know if i'd highly recommend it but i recommend it for myself um it's an annoying chime we're talking about the seat belt driver seat chime right here at the very top we're going to tap on advanced crash safety module and let's go ahead and let that connect and i will show you guys what i'm talking about okay here we are advanced crash safety stuff we're going to scroll down here to the bottom and you're going to look right here under seat belt reminder seat belt reminder driver seat not active you can see that uh, when you tap on it it's automatically not active. That's because I've already coded this. So it's annoying when I get my car. Yes, I'm an advocate of wearing a seatbelt, but when I move the car in the driveway or I'm in a parking lot and I just am, you know, coasting around doing two miles an hour, I don't necessarily want to have a chime going off nonstop. So that's just a small one. But if you rock with it like that, then I would say go ahead and deactivate your seatbelt reminder. Let's keep on moving along. I have one more option that uh, if you're nitpicky like I am, you might wanna go ahead and give this a shot. All right, here we are. Item number five. This is just one of my top five picks. We're gonna go under the lighting tab right here. This is in the body domain controller area. We're gonna tap on rain light sensor sensitivity and set it to very sensitive. I'm one of those guys, I can't stand having a drop of water on my windshield while I'm driving. If it starts to rain, I want the wipers to automatically start going immediately. So factory only allows uh, insensitive to sensitive. I think there's three settings. It's on your windshield wiper stick on the right side of the steering wheel. So go ahead and set that to very sensitive. If you're anything like I am and you wanna have a nice clean windshield, just do yourself a favor, set it to very sensitive. Thank me later. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, gang, that's gonna wrap up today's video. You guys got any questions, concerns, please drop them in the comments below. I always do my best to get back to everybody. I'll drop the link for that OBD dongle in there. And now we're ready to go driving with some of the customized coded things that we've done. I wish I could show you the very sensitive wipers, but it's not raining out. And also you're not hearing a seatbelt chime. I can open the door. You're not gonna hear it. We can go ahead and put it in reverse. You're not gonna hear it. And uh, that's pretty much that, gang. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Let's lose.